Well, one was somebody's school supplies that came late, so, so that wasn't all me. And then my children were doing well. I had to look at my shelter for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> first. So Phil and Simone over ordered the schedule. That's not wrong. Perfect. Yeah, but you need to Well, it's still early, so you probably have to. I got my red light. Oh, <laughs> you have a red light? I figured you're like a Corvette, you're just barreling down the road. I got one. I don't know why it's a red light. Isn't that what a wife is for? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. 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 Restaurant today is warmer in here. Usually it's so cold in here, but today it's actually not cold. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, it's also probably. You mess with the. Uh, it's really it's 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 how many of you in your houses are oh, 71 all the time? Not me. I do. Do you really? <laughs> My friend's not. Yeah. <laughs> and I can do the door open, so I should probably stop doing that. I have a fan on. Yeah, we're here. Oh, uh, if I show a house that's 78, I'm just like, all right, we don't look at this one. <laughs> so listening off there. This yeah. Is Something's wrong with Mr. Wrong with this thing. Morning. Here. Good morning, friend. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Somebody give me some good news. Who's happy the kids are back in school? All right, I have one person that's had the kids back in school. Yeah, my grandson was this week, and um, he is downstairs. He doesn't go back to the 24th of August. And, um, he's listening to the news, and one school in New England goes back after Labor Day. So, that's but it was a long time. Yeah. I, I, I always say, I don't understand why they take the kids out and Middle of May was cool, put them back in the middle, in the middle of July when it's hot. I never understand that. So, anyway, other good news this morning. Yes, ma'am. I will shout out one more time to the amazing agents here at Quan with that school supply drive. We support the East Cobb Middle, Pine Mountain Middle. All right, all right, come up here. I want, I want you to get see on here. This, this is great news. They can hear me. <laughs> yeah, I want a little bit of see. Oh, okay. this, this is this is separate because I want them to see your quick face. For those of you at home, hi, Lexi. Um, Anyway, so shout out to everybody, Quan here at home, all the packages that came in with Amazon. But we supported East Cobb Middle, Pine Mountain Middle, Argyle Elementary, and Sedalia Park Elementary. And those schools were just thrilled. Like even Sedalia Park, I showed up in my boxes. They're like, oh, that's so nice of you to help them all. I'm like, no, those are all yours. And they're like, oh. And like the parents were thrilled, the teachers were thrilled, the principals. So thank you, everybody, for all that you did. Thank you for all the support for school supplies. We made a difference to these schools. To, to the dollar tree mm -hmm. and we uh, <laughs> filled a cart of stuff and what i learned at the dollar tree was that not everything's a dollar still really? <laughs> no there are five dollars stuff there what yeah so that's okay yeah. It's worth it's the and the comment with my grandson about my, now, now nate no seth seth you realize that some children don't have school supplies he goes what do you mean, Pop? I go, well, not everybody has a mom to go out and buy stuff for me. He goes, why not, Pop? I go, well, not everybody can afford that. So we, we had a great conversation about not everybody is as fortunate as we are in this room. So we're thankful, and Chrissy, thank you again. Oh, it's a team you, you and your, who was on your committee, by the way? Uh, India helped raise some folks. India? Um, uh, sorry, Rusty helped do a lot of packing and totes. Thank you, Rusty. Um, why am I drawing a blank? All of a sudden, help me out of India. Daisha was there. Yes, uh, Daisha. Carrie. Oh, Carrie Qualters came yeah. and helped us pack everything Great. up too. And pretty much the team of everybody in Quan who donated all those things. Yeah. We, got, we, we are very given office. We, we love to do that. And so, and please don't forget about socks. Yes. We, yes. We're right. still trying to find socks. Yes. Um, you want to say anything about that? Yes. So, Sock Box is actually um, downstairs on um, the main level, um, right next to um, mailboxes. 
So workroom one. Right. Workroom work one. Was it moved? I moved over to workroom one. Because the electronics are mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that works. <laughs> so yes, yeah, when you're picking uh, up your checks, drop okay. off some socks. Yes, that was my question when we initially said that spot. So I'm glad you moved it. <laughs> so yes, workroom one, one now. So yes, sock box, you can't miss it. It's a bright red, glittery, shiny box mm -hmm. with socks in it. And so my plan is to at least bring 10 pair of socks a week. I just filled up the box um, with at least 20 pair and I got them from the Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Yep, good quality socks. So, okay. yeah. Well, I've also told me if you have clean, usable socks in the drawer, some that you've not put on in years, like I did, um, for some of you who gave me socks for Christmas, um, and some I go, really? Did you buy this on your own? And don't say, yes. <laughs> go, yes. I got, well, Jeff, um, those are interesting colors. Yeah. <laughs> Shark is not one of my colors. We got, if you have socks in the drawer at home that are, that are, that are in good shape, they'll even welcome those socks. Mm -hmm. and that, that's right. Sure. Right, guys, mm -hmm. Thank you so very, very much. I love having those um, those great stories to tell about because guys, we bless others, it blesses us more than we bless them, which is a cool thing. So, okay. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about as far as good news? I do. Okay, please. I always do. First of all, I want to introduce to you Claire Smith. Claire, <laughs> pastor, real estate. Hey, Claire. Hey. 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 Planning. She had a daycare business in her home. Mm -hmm. And and so we've talked starting in March or April. Oh, yeah. And so we've just been counting it down. She is a free woman now, mm -hmm. as of yesterday. <laughs> so she's here with us today. We're glad to have you Thank here. you. Well, yes. Thank you. And yesterday, um, um, Michelle brought by a man that talked to us two years ago. And, and to tell them what he said. Don't tell them where he is, because that would make a difference. Tell them what he said. Oh, gosh. Help me. Uh, oh, you're talking about my guy? My guy. Oh, no. It was well, you me. brought it by Zach. I okay. thought you were confused. Yes. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm doing I'm doing some stuff. Tell us what he told you. So he came to us two years ago. He actually came to a sales meeting and he went with another company. And so he calls me last week and he said, I made a mistake. And I said, How so? And he said, Because I was promised all this training and um you know how to build my business and i am not getting any kind of training and are you guys still hiring so of course i invited him to see if we were a fit because we don't just take everybody right because sometimes we're not a fit right so one of the first questions i asked him and jim was the one who had me ask all the recruits were somewhere else like how long was the contract that you signed with them and his is three years and if he wants to break it, he's got to pay them $3,500. Right, listen one more time. If he wants to leave that office, he's got to write him a check for $3,500. Wow, so right. the training they provided there for free. Which he's which was not, not getting training. it. He's not getting it. He, what he told me, he said, I thought I was going to learn how to build my business. They're teaching me how to dot I's and cross T's and fill out forms. I don't know how to lead generate. I don't know how to get a client. I don't know how to build a business. And so what I asked him what his goals were for the next three years, this guy has huge goals. He wants to really build a business within a business, like a Kelly Allen, a blah, 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 like a Brenda Bichera, Paige Morgan, and he's nothing, not, not that. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this just because I know the, some of the models that are out there, because this is my fourth. And nowhere was I, was I ever taught to be a business owner. I was always treated like a salesperson. Yeah, yeah so we, we, we certainly know there, there are a lot of different models out there. And we're not always the best model for everybody. No. Uh, but I will say that this, I've been this for a long time. No one out there can help you build your business and think like a business owner more than we can. There's not a second to it. Because I mean that humbly because I've had two great companies. I love being. Anyway, guys, we're thankful for, for the people that are that are coming here, Lord, the people that are here on We're Blessed. So let us move on. Our partners, Carrie, are you on? I am. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> something, saying something genius and we can't hear. 
<laughs> hey, Jerry, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, thank you if you came out to our CE class um, that we had, the Choose Your Own Adventure. We had a great class, um, great feedback. So we're definitely going to get another one of those on the books again. So I'll get with Kimberly on some dates for that. Um, and then today, um, this afternoon, if you guys are not following us on um, Facebook or Instagram, please do, because we're going to have some fun contest, um, trivia contest going on this afternoon with some fun prizes. Um, and then if you are going to mega camp um, here in just a few weeks, we are going to host a Thomas and Brown dinner on the 24th, which is that Tuesday night. Um, it's going to be at the Driscoll Hotel and um, it'll be, I'll send all this out, of course, if you're going, but it'll be from uh, I believe 6 to 8.30. I need to check the time with the hotel. But um, anyway, so I'll get all that information out to you guys if you will be joining in Austin. Um, and then let's see, we have another um, closings with Carrie class coming up too. I'll send out all the information on that. It's just sort of a walk through our closing process. Once you all send us a contract, a lot of people like to know what happens <laughs> and why we ask for the things that we ask for. So I will send out a bunch of information today so you guys can get those on your calendars. And thank you as always um, for another great month. We cannot believe it is already August. <laughs> and Karen, remind them again of what you all do and where your locations are. Yes, absolutely. So we um, are your affiliate closing attorney. Um, and so we have offices there in the building, of course, at East Cobb, which is downstairs on the ground floor. And then we have a Woodstock location. We have one at Cobb Galleria. Um, we have Alpharetta. We have a Buckhead location. Um, we have one in Gwinnett and then also Blue Ridge. So we are spread out all over the place um, for you guys to accommodate your amazing closings. So um, we look forward to seeing y'all very soon. Y'all are great partners, Carrie, but we, we adore you. Thank you. We adore y'all too. <laughs> Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Come on up. Yeah. Okay, stop screaming. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Kalawaya. Good morning. Good morning. I just say what I'm here. Sounds better than Twitter. Oh, uh, so good morning, good morning. I'm so happy to be back because I've been virtually all this time and I'm going to be here because I know that when I'm there, I'm trying to say, Jeff, move forward a little bit so I can hear you. So I hope you can hear me. So um, welcome, welcome. My name is Camilo, or you can call me Milo, like my loan officer. <laughs> I know Camilo is going to be a You're still laughing at that joke, Milo. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's working. Exactly. So um, we have a couple of things today, and we're going to start real quick with a new program that we have for FHA. It's a down payment assistance. Yes, yeah, down payment assistance. Yeah. We can help out the clients mm -hmm. with a down payment assistance of 3.5%, but we can increase it to 5%. So the great news on that one is you can use the extra 1.5% to our closing costs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking $3,000, sorry, $300,000. Home, we're talking about kind of 3,500 in service contribution that you can use. So $400,000 is going to be around $6,000 extra money that you can use our closing costs. We are great on the highlights, and we're going to share these uh, later. But the minimum uh, score will be 650. So that's great, 650. Also, if you have clients with 620, 600, 630, we're going to review their case and we might help increase that score to go over 650. But of course, FHA can start with 620. And we have with the 580 now. Yeah, right? we go down to a 580 on FHA. On FHA, regular yeah. FHA. Uh, maximum 50% DTI, so that's huge as well. You know that sometimes <laughs> some conventional, we can go up to 50%, but the conventional is going to be a little more strict in terms of uh, the view or the text of underwriting. So always FHA is going to be more flexible in this type of situations. So I know that when you go and put an offer, you say, I like conventional, I don't like FHA. As always, involve one of us, you know, to help you talk to the listing agent or sign agent or the forward and everything and go over because sometimes we think that the FHA is going to be more strict or the people think that it's going to take longer than it than conventional. It's not that, that's not the case. We always use the same process. Uh, so there's no a big difference between a conventional FHA and this is going to be a really good program. So if you need some additional information about this, get one of us 
Jeff, myself, Kendra, John, we are here to, to help you out. Yeah. And I've got, um, so think about it. This, we're at halftime, right? Just a little bit past halftime. If you think about a football game, we're just into the third quarter, right? And um, who cares about the score in the third quarter? Does that determine who wins the game? No, no. no. So um, this so is a little back and forth. You guys knew it was going to be a tough dog fight out there, and it was. So what were you guys able to do to come back and win this thing? All right, well, at first we started slow. We started real slow. And, you know, that's all right. That's okay, because sometimes in life we're going to start slow. That's okay. We, we, we told ourselves, hey, we're going to start slow. We're going to keep going fast. We're going to start slow. But we're always, always going to finish fast. No matter what the score was, we're going to finish hard. We're going to finish fast. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. They had us. We weren't defeated, but they had us. But it took guts. It took an attitude. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. And that's what our coach told us. He said, he said hey, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. You're going to go out there. You're going to battle. You're going to fight. You're going to do it for one. You're going to do it for one another. Do it for each other. You're going to do it for yourself. You're going to do it for us. And you're going to go out with this win. And we believe that. We truly did. And it's, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Regardless of the situation, regardless of wow. the scoreboard, you're going to be successful because you put in all the time, all the effort, all the hard work, and you know that it's going to pay off. And if it doesn't pay off, you continue to give God the glory. If you still lose the game, you can continue to give each other back. And, that, and that's what we realized. Regardless of the lose, we realized that we were going to be all right. And it's going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to keep smiling. It was awesome. It was awesome. That's a high school. All right. Best half you've ever had. Thank you. This is like a 30 more seconds after that. Sensation after this interview went viral. All right. Don't talk about this. Yes, this is really exciting. And it leads right into what we just saw. So, Nick Saban. You know, arguably the best living coach there is. is uh, we have him uh, uh, through our personal and professional best, August um, 19th at 3 p.m. We will resend out, you all have received the link, we'll resend out the link, supremebest.com slash PPB. And um, you, get to, you get to hear, I mean, it's, it's an honor that we spend time. So we cost $100 per hour. You're getting. Oh, for us. I free, free, free. <laughs> but our CE class, if you're yeah, our CE class of course continuing education fundamentals of credit. Probably you already know everything about credit, the score, and everything. Yes, but sometimes the borrowers they don't know about that. This is free. We do it on Saturdays as well. Besides of the CE, this is for you guys, of course. But also we have the fundamentals of credit class every Saturday for the borrowers for you as well. But of course, this is going to be some senior credits. Okay, so it's going to be October, uh, sorry, August 26th at 1 p.m. Now, keep updating this on the Facebook page as well. Okay, it's free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, please welcome the Assistant Institute. All right, come on up. Did y'all know today is National Watermelon Day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. National Watermelon Day. Oh, hey, we brought breakfast. Um, so there is a gorgeous watermelon peak in there. If y'all haven't seen it, you made it. Wow. Great job. So we are here today to introduce our newest division of the Assistant Institute, and we have branched out to red carpet impressions, which is Siobhan. Um, we are going to be doing client gifts and events for you guys. So our goal is to take an agent's business and piecemeal it. So if you're not ready to hire an assistant yet, we can help you no matter what you need in your business. Who gets to a closing table and goes, oh my gosh, I forgot a closing gift? Well, that's the next quarter. Yeah. Night before, <laughs> right? So Siobhan is really cute and crafty. She makes these great uh, gift baskets um, where we, as long as she has the day before, yes, we like two days before, but the day before, depending on where you're located and how we can get it to you, <clears throat> we can get you a closing gift very quickly. Also, pop by gifts. What else are you doing? Events. Events. So, if you, I don't know if everyone went in there. Do you see the little setup? 
So we can come to your office and do like client appreciations. We can do a venue, um, large or small. We can set it up if we want to wow your clients. Um, you know, we've done like pies, the pie drive bys, all that. Um, we'll come and you tell us what you want and we set it up from start to finish. So we can also help you with getting your, your invites out to your clients. We just need obviously got to do that. I said, help you with that. We can kind of do the behind the scenes of your client events. I know everybody is getting ready to start doing those again, because we're all ready for it. Um, so we are doing a couple of drawings. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about them. So I'm going to hand it over to Siobhan. <laughs> <Javon. laughs> so we have um, our candy bouquets that we make. And this is just like our small one. So if you go to our Facebook page, there is red carpet impressions, and you can also find it by going to the Assistant Institute and it'll just link you over. And if you like our page, you'll automatically be entered to win this. But if you tag your friends, your agents, your clients, whoever you want to, um, then that's another entry for you to be able to win this. And then we will be giving this away next. The 10th, whatever day that is, we'll be giving this one away. So you just have to go on to the Assistant Institute on Facebook. And then we're also giving away one of our medium baskets, which you see these up here. So it has, um, we have kitchen towels in here, a little plan, a candle, a mug with tea, popcorn, and some utensils. So this one will stay at the office for you guys to see. I'll leave it downstairs at the front desk. And all you have to do to enter for this is just drop your business card in, and then I'll be back also on the tip to pull that, and someone will win this. So all you Zoomers out there have an opportunity to win today. So we're not doing the drawing just for the room. It's for everybody here in the office until the 10th, and Siobhan will come back on the 10th and do the drawing and announce who the winners are. Right. And don't forget to get some bagels and some watermelon. Thank you. Because it's not easy to make a watermelon cake. Let me tell you. It's too pretty to cut. Right? That's what I'm just saying. Yeah, nobody wants to cut it. Well, I'll cut the turkey. Good. Does anybody have any questions for us? I heard you. Was that for us? No, no thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. We'll be here until the end of the meeting. If y'all have any questions, we're happy to help answer those for you. And thank you for having us. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, guys, the Y4 C2 TES. Michelle, which is, which is your favorite one today? Um, You know, I always love win win or no deal. So guys, that, 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 that's a great one. We use it. Every day. So, guys, um, on one when I was talking to an agent, and um, she was angry at another agent that had um, listing at this house because she had not disclosed that a previous contract had fallen out because there was a structural issue with the pool. And she says, Jim, she says, that agent has an obligation to disclose it. And I said, Well, she does. It's called what kind of disclosure? What, what's it called, Paige? Seller's property. <laughs> Whose disclosure is the page? It's the seller's property. Exactly right, Jill. Statement. So the seller should disclose that. And I said, but what's this going to take it for your client? She said, what do you mean? I said, before we make it a win-win for him. He said, well, I don't know. Well, maybe you should ask him that first. Before you get mad at the agent, let's ask him or her or them what would make it a win-win for them. So guys, this is the one that Michelle picked up today, and I love it because most of the time we want our client to win. Our client must win, but sometimes that is not the best thing for you or your client or the other side, guys. So I love win, win, or no deal at all, guys. I love that our company lives these Y4C2TES or T's. I think it's also called these days. Feeling smart, trivial night. You want to talk to us about it? Sure. Um, we've been talking about this date, so hopefully you've got the August 21st on your calendar. Um, we'll go ahead and hopefully this week send out the e-bite so you can go ahead and self-select your team. But we're all going to head over to Patty Jackson's backyard, and there's a trivia guy coming in to do trivia for a couple hours. We'll have some prizes and some little light beverages, um, but it should be a lot of fun. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know. But, and I'll remind you again, guys, if you want to select me for your team, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst at this. You would not want to select me. In fact, you want to put me on someone else's team so they would lose. So yeah, just don't select me for that team. And also, I've got an, an earlier event that might also be the Atlanta Board of Rules. Real Estate Conversation and Lead Gen, led by Anthony Johnson, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Guys, if you're missing this, this is a great time for you to go in and talk about 
how to answer questions intelligently. Good morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll stand up. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yes. I'll come to the front. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and stand right over there. Okay. <laughs> Where they can see you. Hello. Can you guys see? Yeah. Uh, good morning. Um, so I just wanted to come up really quickly and speak about real estate conversations and lead generation. Um, this is something that we do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the lead gen room. If you're not familiar with where the lead gen room is, that is on the first floor. So as you come in to the right. Um, and so we get together every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we have real estate conversations. Um, I guess some people would say it's practice, you know, practice, practice. Today, um, a script, but it's really just how you have conversations um, with your clients, um, how to have conversations, what to say, how to grow your business, basically. And so we do that. We practice that with each other. Um, our brain does a really good job keeping us together, <laughs> making sure that we stay on track. And we have a good time. It's more than that, though. Um, we come together, we share stories, we, you know, oftentimes ask questions and just sharing those experiences is really helpful. Um, and so I invite you to come out. If you've been, then you know what it's all about. If you have not been, I encourage you to come. Um, it's definitely something that you need to take advantage of. Great, thank you. Yeah, come see us, oh, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yes, yes. tomorrow is from actually 8.30 to 1 o'clock, right? Yes. Um, so we're actually having lunch provided. We're gonna go a little bit longer tomorrow um, and that's open to, of course, everyone. So, you know, if you're a well-seasoned agent, still come out. If you're a newer agent, I definitely recommend you come out and just come here. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank right, you. That was a non-agent. Now you're in this room, you think, oh, that doesn't work. Well, they don't show up long. Yeah, and, and so I have a little uh, excerpt from right, here. Do. And this is Gary Keller, right? And he said a long time ago, somebody taught me to say, if it's to be, it's up to me. And so when he first heard, he said, okay, that's great. And then Gary being Gary said, okay, let me just make it more personal. If it's to be, why not me? But I would say to it to myself, and I still felt that there was still some doubt persistent in the message. So now I simply say, if it's to be, it will be me, right? So what he's saying, he's encouraging you to say, if it's to be, it has to be me, right? No excuses, nobody else. Faith leads to momentum. I cannot stress strongly enough what showing up for your business does. I see it all around me every day. I've been in this room for 13 now going on 14 years. I remember when the market tanked. And we would come in here, cry, bumble and bumble away through our scripts. Please come out. This is the last time I am begging you guys to come work on your business. Because what we know is this market is changing. And that 80% of the people who are in this room will not be in here if you don't work on your business like a business. And I hate to pick on you, but I'm going to pick on Paige. And I'm going to pick on Liz. And I'm going to pick on the people. And Brenda, I remember one day when the market tanked, Brenda is like, call my phone. I need to know that it still works. If you're not working on your business, you are not going to stand. And this is the last time I will be up here begging you to work on your business. Because it's a business, right? And we want to see all of you succeed. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I'm a reborn advocate because honestly, the first couple times I went, I was very uncomfortable and I, I didn't like it at all. Um, but the thing I found is you get what you, what you put in it. And I, I think you can't, this isn't something you got to be, you got to be committed to it. It isn't something you can come once a week or every other week and get anything from because the relationships we're building, we're actually really challenging each other. These are, these are tough <laughs> scripts. It isn't that softball. Well, let me feed him and let him off the hook like it was when we first started. So the more comfortable everybody gets with you, the better you're going to get too, because we're going to be harder. Because an informed way to respond to someone's question is what what will win you the deal. When you have an informed answer rather than we're not doing that, 
So let's come out and say, all right, you guys, y'all invited to continue education class here also. It's on home warning training, home warranty training. Um, that's happening on Thursday, August 5th. That's this Thursday from 9 to 12 in, um, in this office right here. So, guys, I have information about this on email, Kimberly. So, I, I saw this one. So, what are you going to ask? RSVB to mwall at firstamerican.com. Thank you. Moving on. Utilizing Google tools taught by Kevin Jackson. He's going he's gonna to teach you how to use Google tools. Um, and it's the 11th, 12th, and obviously 11th. I'm going to sign up for that class, but I need to know more about that. So, yeah. guys, utilizing Google tools. Thank you, Kevin Jackson, for doing that. Marketing your listings talks by Christy Hyatt. Christy, you'll say something about this. Oh, uh, is that, uh, I'll say something about that. August 9th. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good night. Yes. Uh, uh, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., guys. Uh, so, and, and Christy, put it on your calendar, please. <laughs> Hey guys, as always, command happy hour from your phone. Kevin Jackson does this. This is a chance for you to ask really dumb questions and get a very informed answer. He does this uh, next on August the 12th from 5 to 6 p.m. and bring your favorite um, beverage from your house. Can, so you think you can script. Don't miss it. Um, you want to talk about this, um, please, um, R3? KWYP. Oh, okay. Just uh, tell them like I'm done professionals. Taylor, are you on? You don't have to be young, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're all young at heart. Right. right. Exactly. So I, I should be there because August 12th, 1 to 3, um, I'm at a market center. Uh, it's going to, can you think you can script? So, guys, that's um, come on by the Kelly Jump Professionals Network. So, please be here for that. Don't miss it. And then, of course, guys, this guy is a great instructor. He's a math coach, he's a bowl coach. Um, own your neighborhood with geographic farming. Rob Daniel's gonna do that. He's a bowl coach again Thursday, August the 12th, 1 to 2. This is brought to you by the Rawls Group. Zoom meeting ID is right here. More information to come. Rob is amazing. <clears throat> Perry Associates, Raising the Bar, presents Google for Real Estate Agents. Free seating with um, Juanita McDowell, Thursday, August the 19th at 10 to 1 p.m. Now we have lots of classes. Juanita is fantastic. If nobody's ever taken one of her classes, she is full of energy. Good. She has she has those she does social media classes too, but Highly Good. There, there's someone that's taking her class and she's wonderful. But guys, this is something that um, that um, you guys, if you're not registered, we need to do it. It, it, it is via Zoom or via live social media, I guess. On um, Mega Camp, August 23rd, 26th, guys, it costs you a couple hundred bucks, thirty nineteen dollars. And guys, it is well worth that for investment in you for you to, to sit, even if you only just do Gary Keller's opening remarks. Uh, it's worth it, guys. So this is Mega Camp, August twenty third, twenty sixth, and hopefully this will be our last. Um, virtual mega camp in our history. I love it when we can all go together. Ignite, Michelle, you want to say anything about this? You know, um, first of all, thank you for Chris Van Zandt for kicking it off every Ignite session. There's 12 sessions that go on. Um, we just started yesterday. So if you want to jump in, you can still do it. I see some of my um, instructors in the room who are amazing. Hold your hand up if you volunteered to do it this time. All right, you can't miss it. These are two high powered people. You'll learn a lot, but even if you want to reignite your business because you don't feel like it's gone the way you want, an amazing way to do so. I did mine, um, I had to pause uh, for a period of time, came back into it and took this and then stayed in the top 20% until I got out of, of that. So you can't go wrong with that and it's, um, very inexpensive. You can get CE credits if you don't need post licensing, 33 hours. And if you need post licensing, you get that plus nine hours. Or you can audit it for free. You can <laughs> you can audit it for free and you can buy just the book if you want to. Got respectfully, nobody else teaches this on this level. Nobody does, nobody has their age teaching classes that can do this stuff well, guys. These people would be number one in most any office over here. Everyone listening to this list would be number one in other offices. Guys, uh, please jump in the ignite. It's a it's well worth your time and energy. Yeah. All right. Lessons learned. Oh well. boy, what a week. Um, but you know what? This week was a, a little different than previous weeks because we had some real sharp agents work through some real tough issues. I'm gonna quickly just say Mandy Patella 
is mm -hmm. amazing. She, she is. is because she let, she parked her ego at the door mm -hmm. and she had a stinker pot of mm -hmm. an agent to work with, but she just rose above it mm -hmm. and she closed, which I would never have believed would have happened. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we go over there, there's also really good things that I like to share. But we promised last week we would talk about title issues. Do you all remember that? Okay. So how many of you out here, just by a show of hands, and if you're on TV land, you can do it too, um, have had closings that had title issues? Okay, okay, we're seeing that. What are some of the typical title issues that you are seeing? Dead people. Dead people. Yeah. Dead people are, are, Dead people are, are still on the title. Um, liens that just pop up that my client didn't tell me about. Right. Still hurt by that one. Um, ex tax liens, ex spouses, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of things that can, mm -hmm. can derail something. What's one way, it's not the only way, but what's one way you can see if there has, have been um, foreclosures or um, where they're behind? Um, can, where can you go to find that information? You go to the courthouse if you know how to do it, but where else? Closing a term. Closing a term. The first thing I always tell people to do um, is go to realists. Is realists always 100% correct? No, it is not. But if you've got a signed contract and it says Mary Smith on it, and you see in realists that Bob Jones owns it, could there be a problem? Yes, there could be. Um, you can you can see trusts that come up. There's a lot of things. So always, always go there first and just make sure that it matches. If it doesn't, what's the next thing you're going to do? Call your closing attorney. Mm -hmm. Call your closing attorney. Uh, could you call the other agent and go, why? Is there someone on this? No, you wouldn't do that? Mm -hmm. They probably oh, I'm just, not. I'm, no. I'm just probably, asking. They probably don't know either. Well, they don't know who the, whose house they're selling. They probably, they probably <laughs> didn't do the work to see somebody else. Okay, well, that, that's yeah. a problem. You know, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know who you're selling. Anyway, that the next thing, and I'll tell you why I'm telling you this, is you can go to the closing attorney. If I suspected that there was something not correct, or if I see that it's a trust, or different things, I might go to the closing attorney, as Paige said, and have them do it during due diligence, if possible, because what we're seeing is really severe title issues coming up that can't be resolved in a short period of time, and what happens to your buyer in the meantime? Have they spent money that they maybe spent unwisely because they didn't know that the appraisal wasn't going to matter because they couldn't get this property anyway. Yeah, they have. So do, do check those things. You can't always catch them, but we have a situation right now where <clears throat> there is a severe title lien and it has to do with an SBA loan. Does anybody know what those are? Small business. They collateralize over a broad spectrum and include the house, cars, all sorts of things. And the guy can't pay it off. Um, it won't, it won't, and so he's got to go back. And so the the agent, I said, you better talk to your client about a plan B because if they think they're moving, they doesn't it doesn't appear. And so he goes, Yeah, but we're gonna hope. I said, No, no, let's talk about a plan B. I said, Okay, I'm gonna give you plan B. They're moving in with you. So um, then began to see that they needed to do something. So please check this. We're seeing um, all sorts of things. And remember, if you will write this down, read your contract. Read your contract. Hey, that's novel. Um, but on the second page, 1B, it says, buyer may examine title and obtain a survey of property and furnish seller with written statement of title objections at or prior to closing. And there's a special, you could add a special step that said seller to reimburse buyer if 
unable to resolve the title issue because they probably spent a good deal of money by that time. The other thing is, please remember on um, section four or paragraph four, A, it says um, they can have eight days notice to extend out if there's a title problem, if seller cannot satisfy valid title objections, excluding title objections, excluding title objections that can be satisfied through the payment of money, money or bonding off the same. What that means is there are some sellers that are saying, no, I'm not paying that money, and, but they could. And by having that in there, it keeps them from possibly not selling. Now you gotta be able to prove it, but that's why you would do a, a title search in the beginning. Okay. I think that the, the biggest issue that we have with any of this does not start at the time that the buyer and the seller enter into the agreement, right. but it's the time that the seller and the broker enter into the agreement. Sure. And on page two of the list exclusive listing agreement, it has several questions. And it's not something just to skip over when you're getting a seller to sign an agreement. And it says, now I'm going to use my script because I can't quote it, Please. but I have a script that says, now do we need to talk about bankruptcy? Okay. And um, is there any reason that there would be a title cloud on your property? It, are you actually the seller? It's amazing the information you can get if you ask the question, is there, are you actually the owner of the property? Have any of you ever had people say, no, I have. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. My sister and I own it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then sister needs to sign the property, sign this listing agreement, not just the contract, but the listing agreement. Right. And it also says now that there's a new portion in the listing agreement that states, um, that asks the questions about, are you the only one? Who else do we need to contact? Everything, it goes into great detail and it's because of the issues and problems that we've had down the road. But if the listing agent skips over that part, then it, then it becomes the problem of the buyer. And it should never go that far. It should never become the problem of the buyer. Exactly. But it says, do I, and I, my script is, do, we, do I need to consult with you with regards to divorce? bankruptcy or short sale mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even trusts get can get messy um if they haven't been reported or the and the attorney needs the paperwork so page is co correct when we are listing um many of us fail to read the contract thoroughly if we don't do you think your seller does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's your job to point out so, because why do all the work and not be able to sell the property. Mm -hmm. So thank you for adding that in. I appreciate that. Any questions on that? If not, we'll move to the fun part. Uh, that's, that would be, um, does anybody have someone they're working with that they can't find a home? Of course we do, but <laughs> that we might be able to help you with. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yes. <laughs> Y'all go first. No, I might go have ahead, Harvin, go ahead. Okay, all right. So I've got three. Um, oh, I'm three and Johnson. I don't want her to call. Say, say your name. I'm three and Johnson. So I've got three, and they're very specific. Two of them, Lassiter and Lassiter High School, up to 500, right? And then the other is has to be High Tower and Hope. <laughs> up to 500 very specific because G's children are already in school and we need those houses like yesterday and then the other i've got a 275 in mapleton Austell, anywhere we can find something for 275. Thank you. we'll even go to kenny saw or Ackworth. great thank, thank you. you thank you arthur ray scott what price range 275 wow. okay Thanks. all right Anybody else out here or TV land? <laughs> well, let's just jump in and just jumble everything up. Go ahead and say if you've got any upcoming listings and if any shy person decides they want to share what they need, just jump into. So upcoming listings. 
Hi, Michelle. This is Lisa Wren. Um, I have one going live today that so is a... a lot and it is in Mountain Park. If you guys are familiar with Mountain Park, it's the little um, getaway so mountain. It's so cute. That's right smack back in the middle of Roswell that I just found yesterday. It's like going back in time. Yes. This community was um, for, founded in 1928 so that rich people from Atlanta had an escape to the mountains in Roswell, but not too far. It is said that Al Capone had a safe house. And when you drive in up in this little place, it's like going back to the 1928. For real. So I've got a I've got a lake view lot coming up. It is so cute. And I think I'm gonna list it between 85 and 90 because it's 0.29 of an acre. Yeah, so cute. All right. So who else? Who else has things coming up? Anybody out there? <clears throat> I guess everybody's getting people ready for school. That I think that's it. I'm going to turn it back over to Jim. Great, great. Um, so guys, we're going to talk about the market today. Um, and I'm hoping there is Rusty right there in the drop also. Um, I hope so. Anyway, um, Brenda, come on up here and sit up here with me if you would, please. And guys, one of the things we started talking about um, several months ago was we were seeing a slowdown in the market. Um, Courtney Newton came up here and said that she was seeing things go on the market um, that, that concerned her longer days in the market. Um, so many other things going on that we thought maybe there's a slowdown. And of course, um, my mind went to, yeah, but every June, what happens? The market does what? Slow. It slows down. Exactly right, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so guys, I've asked three, three agents to sort of join us today and talk about what they're seeing out there in the market right now. So since Brenda's up, I'm going to let her go first. Brenda, what are you seeing out there right now? What are you seeing from your vantage point? I didn't realize it was such a general question. Um, so I agree that there is a, the season, we're, we're definitely experiencing the seasonality of the market. You know, there's not just one thing that affects prices, right? There's a lot of things, right? Interest rates, how much inventory there is, jobs, the overall economy, everything, schools, the media. There's so many things that really affect prices and I and I actually compared 2019 January through June and 2021 January through June and compared the numbers that you could find on the FMLS and you will see that while it feels like how how many people think that what we've been experiencing this excessive sellers market how long do you think it's been going on <clears throat> A couple of years. Years. Couple of years. years. And it just got Anybody else. Twelve. It just got twelve months. years. Mm -hmm. Three months. Page. Three months. months. Three months. Mm -hmm. That that is more accurate. It's mm -hmm. it's actually been about three months. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look at January numbers, houses were selling and the average days on market were like 30 to 32 to 48, depending on if it had price reduction or not. That was in January. Now, granted, when they were closing in January, they were really going under contract in November or December, right? Mm -hmm. But even if you look into February and early March, you'll still see that the houses that were closing in January were still having that 25 days on the market. It didn't really get excessive until the last 60 to 90 days, where all of a sudden, the average days on market is 11 days, okay? And that's across all of them. This is just area 81, 82, and 83. And so when you look at the seasonality, we have, we have been experiencing seasonality the whole time. And yes, it has been a seller's market for a long time, but this excessive seller's market, I think that we, first of all, it's, it's been hard, right? Hasn't this been like a really hard market? Doesn't it feel like it's been going on for like so much longer? It's like you're thinking, I mean, seriously, you know, you look at the numbers and you go, how is that possible? I feel like I've aged five years in the last three months. Seriously. It's like, it's like raising a two year old. It's only one year. Only two for one year. What does it feel like? It feels longer, right? And so that's really what's happening now. It definitely, you know, we are 
are an extreme <laughs> seller's market that is real and it's been extreme for a while but just not not the way we're experiencing it today mm -hmm. and so we're having a little bit of a leveling out and in my opinion um in my opinion i think we as agents and our sellers have a little bit of the influence on the market what's happening right because we're pushing prices we're pushing prices we keep pushing them and pushing them and then you know we list a house and we're like there's no way it's going to sell for that no and it sells way. for fifty thousand dollars more and then you're like okay what's going on where you know and so the next time your seller wants to go another 25 you're like all right let's try it and sure enough it sells again and so now we're in the habit and they're in the habit of overpricing and what's happening now that the seasonality is starting to you know starting to level out the market now all of a sudden now I don't think that's the only thing that's happening, but now we're seeing that, oh my gosh, price reduction left and right and left and right because we're overpricing and the seasonality and there's buyer fatigue and there, like, there's a whole bunch of reasons that we're seeing that. So I don't know if that's- Well just, stated. Russell, what are you seeing? I, you know, first of all, it does seem like a year. I'm gonna have to start coloring my hair because I feel like oh. I've got a lot of hair. Um, you know, Brenda, I, I say exactly what Brenda just said, and I was looking at um, Pope and Walton just while we were sitting here because I had an aha moment the other day when I was talking to an agent, and I just did a quick search, um, and we were looking the other day, and I was like, okay, there was this many active, and half of them have taken a price reduction. So I just did a search while Brenda was talking, and there's 23 active properties from 350 to 650 in Pope. And 11 of them have taken price reductions since being listed. So then I went to Walton. There's 41 active in that same price point. 22 of them have taken price reductions. So I do believe we're in this seasonality, right? And, and I think, as I told you the other day, Jim, I think we've got a little bit of, hey, it's summertime. But I also think I see a little bit of shift in that market. I think the buyers are exhausted. And I think now that the agents are having to look at their property a little more and going, oops, we may have overpriced it out of the gate. We need to get it back in line, right? So everything that Brenda just said, as far as I'm concerned, is spot on with the way I look at it as well. All right, so, so, so what, what do you all see going forward? Where, where, where do you see us going from now to the end of the year? Any ideas, any thoughts on that? Well, Jim, you taught me when I first got in this business, you know, the market is the market. We're gonna have to deal with it, okay. right? Let's, let's go back to 2007, eight, nine, and 10. We had to figure out what that looked like and we had to recreate ourselves and we had to deal with that market. I don't have that crystal ball. Um, as I've been coaching my agents, it's been more of, okay, guys, let's make sure that just, I, I was on a meeting before I hopped on here. We're talking about all the FHA and VA buyers that have not been able to be in the market, You know that they've not been able to win the offers. Let's tee them back up to start warming them back up to getting back in the market. And this market, as we know it, I believe is going to loosen up. And this is Russell Barber's crystal ball, but I'm, I'm just looking forward and just kind of looking at it. And Brenda, correct me if you see something different. What do you see, Brenda? No, I mean, I think, you know, like you said, we don't have a crystal ball. Nobody can really tell you what it's going to do. Um, I think the biggest take on this is that we hear national numbers and we hear you know, um, state numbers, or we hear, you know, Metro Atlanta numbers, we need to remember that we're the local experts mm -hmm. and nobody can tell the story the way we tell the story. And we just need to educate ourselves on what's happening in the market and right here, because that's how we're going to compete. And so I say that, what I mean by that too, is, you know, we do need to realize and, and never forget that even in 2020, during COVID, there was a seasonality. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 that doesn't change. Now, it may get bigger, it may get smaller at times. We need to remember that we should adjust anyway. We should adjust for the season. And we also need to remember that we need to start talking to our sellers about pricing right. We know when we price it right, it sells typically for more than what it's worth. I mean, we know that when you price it aggressively, you're going to get multiple offers and you have an opportunity to potentially sell it a little more than the market, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Mark doing that. And then I think we as agents have gotten a little sloppy with, 
things that sold no matter what they look like, well, we have to prepare those houses mm -hmm. for sale and we can't forget what our job is because right. I think it's right. it's not just pricing it right, it's not just marketing, it's not just networking, it's preparing it, it's it's a lot of different things. So I just feel like if we start doing those things, um, and it's what Russell is basically saying is that we will influence how those prices change. If we keep overpricing, the consumer is going to start saying, boy, that house has been sitting on the market for three months and it hasn't sold. What's going on? Is right. the market tanking? Like, because that's people are starting to say, wow, everything was selling in a week and now all of a sudden it's not selling. And they think it's been going on for two years. And so all of a sudden everybody thinks we're in a bubble. So I think we just need to say, tell the local story. Okay, so um, Paige, I didn't tell you to ask you this question, so but I'm gonna ask you since you're sitting back, okay? So, so <laughs> but back when we were all getting 20 offers on all of our listings, you said I'm not. I'm getting two or three offers on my, my listings. Share with with them what you shared with me and what you did to sort of only get two rather than 20. Because 20, how do you pick a, a, a best offer out of 20? Share with what you did. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. Um, yeah, we were talking about it. I laughed and I said, I was in, team, in sales meeting the other day. People said they got 36 offers. And I'm like, I've never heard of that. And I, I, I never experienced that. During all of the raising of the two-year-old, I never experienced 20 offers on a piece of property. And I um, say that our team has been very aggressive in our pricing but we have priced things correctly and we have stayed with the three P's. We are properly pricing it. We are properly presenting it and we are professionally marketing it. We have not changed our standards. And I believe that's what we were talking about is not changing your standards to the market and not reflecting the, for lack of a better term, insanity of the market. Um, don't go out there and be a part of it. Don't be a part of the problem and always be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And in that way, I'm properly preparing my sellers. Uh, I know you've heard the stories about 36 offers from the people down the street from you. And let, I'm here to tell you that if you receive 36 offers, I didn't do my job right. Because there are 36 people out there that think your house is worth more than I did. Mm -hmm. Well stated. Hmm. Well, that's well stated. So, Brenda, as you're talking to a seller right now, what, what, what are you telling them? I don't know. I think that, you know, there are certain houses and certain price points that do bring that overwhelming amount of yes. number of mm -hmm. listings. Yeah. What, I, what I've seen is, and we didn't receive it on many. I'll give you an example. We had a house in Lasseter at 300,000, wow. which was a number that, and it was dolled up. I mean, it was dolled up. And we priced it in that neighborhood, 40,000, no, 350. We, we priced it 35,000 higher than anything that has sold in that yes. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it got 42 offers. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. it, I mean, and we, and we priced it high. I mean, the whole neighborhood was like, oh my gosh, our neighborhood they can't really wait high. to see. Yeah, yeah. So even when we priced it, what I was thinking aggressively, we received on that certain price points that you can't get into in certain school districts. Now, does that happen on a higher end? Name? You know, because you have pockets of there's more buyers in 300 in Lasseter than there is in. 500 and so you do have some pockets that I think you will have seen a little bit of that um especially you know those houses that look picture perfect that the person who who dolled it up for themselves they didn't do it to sell they mm -hmm. they fixed it up mm -hmm. those houses are just going to warrant that kind of a demand mm -hmm. um and of course it was an extreme you know an extreme seller's market at the time at that point it was i think it was like january or february uh -huh. yeah. so it was definitely when there wasn't a lot going on as, as far as the seasonality all the buyers and anyway so um <laughs> so but i do know what you're saying is you shouldn't be surprised if you only get three offers you know i did yeah. the other day somebody said to me Oh my gosh, the market's changing. We only got four offers on this property. Really? And I'm like thinking, wait, what? What did you just say? <laughs> no, that's good. And, you know, we need we need these things not to, we don't need it to crash, but we need it to, we need to 
to level it out a little bit, you really do not. I mean, whenever one side of the equation, whether it's the buyer or the seller, is winning, 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 and the other people are just being beat to heck, you know, it you can't sustain that. The market can't sustain that. It's gonna market correct. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, Brent. Good to say. Yes. Russell, what are you telling your sellers right now? I, you know, it's an array. It's kind of been interesting because we've got some sellers that want to be totally in the in the driver's seat and tell us exactly what we should do uh, because of what they're hearing on the news. And, and we have to deliver that information kind of like what Brenda said. That's great. National news is national news. Let's talk about what's going on locally. Let's talk about what's going on in your street, your area, your school. Um, and, and we're showing them the comps as they, you know, in real time as they're coming about. Um, I've had a situation similar to, or we've had several, several situations similar to what Brenda was describing, where in that certain price point where we've gone aggressive, we've still received 20, 25, 30 offers. We've had one hit over 50 offers. Right. And that blew all of us out of the water. We had, we did not see that coming. And there was a moment like, oh my gosh, did we underprice this or what? And it was just such a concentrated demand in that area. So, you know, we're, we're just having the real conversations with them. And that's all we can do. We can be the deliverer of the black and white information as we see it printed in the FMLS and what we get from Chuck Carr every month. You know, but this is, this is a daily thing, as everybody knows. You've got to stay in touch with what's going on daily. I haven't looked lately, but when I looked a few weeks ago, there were 3,500 listings on the market system. Correct. Yeah. Last year at this time, there were 14,000. 14,500 something. So, so, so how, how, how do we get out of this market, guys, to where we only have 3,500 listings where we can get back to even a 30, I'm so sorry, 30, 45 day supply of, of, of listings? How, how do we get there? Russell, what's your first? I just. I don't, I don't know that there's a break glass escape route to get out of this market. Um, I, I think it will naturally progress and it will naturally happen. And, I, and again, I believe we're seeing the beginning of that. Yes, I believe we're still in the seasonality of summer, but I truly believe um, that that pendulum is going the other way. And obviously, we don't know that we've shifted markets until we're actually really in it. But I think, again, we just have to deliver the appropriate information to the buyers, to the sellers, make the best informed. They can make the best informed decision they can. And I think it's a natural progression. Again, I don't think we're in control of that. Brenda? You know, the only thing I'm going to say here, because I looked at the numbers, is that um, there are more transactions happening this year right. than in 2019. Yet we have less listings. If you look at the sales, you know, June in 2019, June, June 2021, in area 83, um, there's 107 transactions for 2021 and 85 in 2019. Yet, it's a lot less listings. And if you look at every single month in the last six months and compare it to two years ago over a six month period, in pretty much all but one category, there are more transactions. And so, so if you look at that, you know, it's it's ironic that there's less listings yet we're we're selling more houses at least in area 81, 82, 83. We we our market is pretty active. Right, absolutely. Yeah, it's, that's why buyers are still engaged, right? Mm -hmm. They they're getting beat up on the price yeah. for every one percent. They're able to go up another, I think it's ten thousand um, dollars in price. So that definitely, it's, money is cheap, mm -hmm. and they're like, we're not going to pay as much interest. Let's buy now, mm -hmm. and that's that's definitely a huge trigger in that people uh, through COVID and after COVID and people that, yeah, it's definitely stimulating. Well, Linda, your team had a good year this year. What are you doing to prepare for the last part of this year to, to, to stay in or in the game? Anything that y'all are working on that you're sure to focus on? I mean, like everything, especially, I feel like we have micro shifts now, and I'm, I'm sure you see this, there's it's constantly shifting all the time. It's not, you know, you have to be looking at the market and, and shifting a little bit with it because it happens with the seasons, it happens with the economy for all different reasons. I mean, we just, you know, stay focused, buckle down, and just, 
keep going. Has lead generation changed you in the past three months? Not really. Wow, so you mean consistency is really what makes it happen? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Novel concept. That's what's changing you all. Used to be a 20, 20 rule is getting worse than 9010 rule. 10% yeah. of, of the agents are doing 9% of the business, guys. And that, that that's that's the part that, that you that we're looking at um, in our in our uh, meetings right now is how can we get the people that are not producing it out there to do at least one deal? So we're really focusing that right now. Um, Russell, are y'all doing anything to change what you're doing between now and end of the year? So Jim, we were actually, again, going back to the meeting I was on before I joined you, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about each individual agent knowing their numbers, uh, making sure that they, they are looking at December 31st and knowing where they want to be. And, and again, looking at our CRM and who's sitting there and who do they need to contact. But to say necessarily we're changing anything, I wouldn't say we're changing anything. We're just fine tuning what we've already got in place. Going back to what Brenda said. We're, we're looking at everything we need to be looking at and, and hopefully working towards the common goal of, of closing transactions. Um, we just wanna make sure that every lead that we get in is taken care of and that we're doing the best we can to ensure that. So do, do you find it harder now to do business than you did a year ago? Um, you know, I, let's talk about 2020. I feel like we keep shoving it to the side for a second. It's, it was a good year for us. Um, we did less transactions than we did in 2019, but had a higher GCI, I believe. And, and I look at that and I go, well, that taught us a lot as we navigated through, as we navigated through the pandemic. But um, do I find it harder to do business? I don't necessarily find it harder. I just find it, I know my buyer's agents were definitely experiencing fatigue as their buyers did. Um, but again, it's, it's business, it's sales. We just have to change with it. It might be exhausting at times, but we pick our, you know, we, we tie our boots up the next day and keep on going. Great. Brenda, do anything different this year than you did last year? Say that one more time. Did you I ask her? What do you think you're doing this last year? No, we stay very focused. And I mean, are, obviously, we you stay are very focused. focused. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we try to continue to do that. There's a lot of noise out there that's disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you could get, you know, squirrel. <laughs> no, and you just need to keep, you know, keep that at bay. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, hey, John. What would you say, buddy? Yes. Brenda is so right. When it's the noise out there and all the white noise in the background, and I have agents come in my office and go, "Did you see this? Or did you hear about that?" Guys, we got to remember to keep all that off to the side. That's third-hand information. Unless you're getting it firsthand and you know it factual, that is just noise. Stay focused and move forward is the message there. You're exactly right, Brenda. Yeah, and I think I, I say that even more so even emotionally, you know, we need to keep our emotions in check. And I think that as agents, that's the biggest thing that we can do when we let our emotions, you know, when something goes wrong, it's going to go wrong. It's okay. It's going to be a blip. And then it's next, mm -hmm. next, mm -hmm. you know because you can, and you influence your client with your emotion. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. you, know, you have to make sure that you are the, you know, the voice of reason, you got it under control. This, this is gonna be, you know, I wouldn't say a walk in the park, but don't worry, we got you covered. We're gonna get, you know, we're gonna do this. this is how we're a partnership. Um, and just make sure that you keep your emotions in check. Yeah. Especially when you hear price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. I mean, I'm on this, text string where somebody was like what's going on with the market and it's like okay yeah have we not lived through price reductions before yes, <laughs> you know i mean this is just another day right yeah. i mean it's just another day and yes we need to acknowledge it and adjust and and move on are you all um before we close anybody have any questions either Michelle, i do i do have two questions jim okay all right marlene marlene Quiroz. um so for brenda i you know, how how are you navigating with the thing called Sestimate <laughs> from Zillostimate, sorry, Zillostimate and um, Mark, um, and Mark, the, the guy, <laughs> because I have been in, for example, in two listed appointments and I look at the numbers, I give my best shot of uh, the listing price and people keep coming back to me. Oh no, but says, uh, Silo says this, and is way high of what I 
uh, will feel comfortable offering. And that's, you know, um, uh, at the point where uh, the sellers are, okay, let me think about it. Another one told me, you know, oh, well, the number that you are giving me is exactly what um, Mark will give me and uh, Mark Spain, and I will talk to them. So then I do not know if I am going too low, but I, you know, I'm afraid to go too high and be there later redu reducing the price. That's one question. And the second question is, uh, what do you think for the, all the buyers, you know, I have five buyers that were approved before all this craziness uh, for, you know, the 200, 250, they were FHA, like you said, they were now they are exhausted, but I don't know if there will be the time that they can come back because now I can find or I can see anything, you know, being all the prices push uh, up, I can't see in the near future that these people are going to be able to buy in that price and be able to help them. So I don't know, any suggestions would be welcome. So on the first one on Zestimates, oh my goodness, that I love that. That's, that's one of my favorite objections to overcome. And, and let me tell you why. I, and, and, and most buyers or sellers will say, well, this is what Zestimate says, but I know. I mean, they normally will say, but I don't know if it, you know, how accurate it is. And I always say, well, you, you know about, you know, the CEO's house, right? There's estimate and how off it was. It was. Do you, do you guys know that story? Well, you could certainly pull it up, okay? It was off by like 68% of the value. They, they priced it. Zestimate said one thing, and what it ended up selling for was like, I, it might be like 58% or 55% of the Zestimate amount. And it was on the market for like three years. He got such bad press, Zillow did, but we forget that. And it's, it's, you can like Google it and you can have it when you go into a <laughs> listing appointment um, in case they bring it up. Don't bring up Zestimates unless they bring up. So Zestimates are so inaccurate. It's an algorithm that nobody knows. I don't even think Zillow knows what their algorithm is, seriously, because there's no rhyme or reason. You can have a little house. You know how we have here in East Top, and this is why they're probably basing it on a very large area or or not, Here, here's what I'm saying is, in our, in our like Indian Hills, you can have a house that sells for a million and a house that sells for 350 because it's just a lot. Well, Zillow doesn't understand that, right? Because they, it's, it's a computer generated algorithm value. So there's no, there's no validity in it. So you could easily argue that point. In regards to Mark Spain, I think the biggest thing that I would say with Mark Spain is, if y'all didn't know this, well, you're going to find out right now, is <laughs> that the people that they send to do a listing appointment don't live in the area, don't, don't know the area, okay? And that in and of itself should be, if they say that to you, you say, did you ask them if they, how many houses that particular agent sold in this area or do they live here do they know the schools do they do they know the neighborhoods do they know how to sell your this area because they're not local guys they're not local i know i mean i had somebody on my team that was on mark spain and he was going to listing appointments he lives in woodstock or Ackworth, and was going to listing appointments in like newman Okay. And he's like, it's the weirdest thing. They don't even, they don't give you your area. It's intentional. And I'm not really sure why that is. Um, so that's another thing. And then in regards to your second question, which was, what was uh, the, the two for the client with you know, FHA? I think I would touch base with them right now, right? Because we know that, you know, right now prices are starting to stabilize a little bit, right? And we also know that at the end of the year, you know, the holidays, some people, you know, it's not going to be as competitive for them right now. So I would just touch base with them. And I would also set some realistic expectations about areas. So you're mm -hmm. trying to buy 250 in Lassiter. Mm -hmm. well, can we look at, mm -hmm. you know, Woodstock, Hackford? Mm, not Woodstock. Uh, well, maybe not in that downtown Woodstock, but a little further out. <laughs> you need to set reasonable <laughs> expectations about that price point. Because where they were able to buy initially may not be that area. And that that is something that you, you need to revisit with all of your buyers is it's changed. Let's talk a little bit about 
what you're willing to give up on your search. Mm -hmm. What's the real criteria? And something else to add to that um, in that lower price point um, is not to forget about new construction. I'm real tapped into that. And I've noticed that builders are starting to percolate with these, these you know, it might be a townhome, it may not be a single family, but in that 275 to 300,000 price point in more areas than maybe six months ago, mm -hmm. I think because now they're starting to release lots, lumber prices are coming down. So they're starting right. to navigate through that. So don't forget the new home construction side of it too, because they don't always list everything in FMLS. So you have to kind of do the homework and boots on the ground and go to some of these communities to get a better feel for that price point. And maybe they can go to Springberry. Maybe they can go to Pell. It's very affordable right now in Pell. We've sold several properties in that area. Mm -hmm. It's super mm -hmm. affordable. The houses are so cute. It's so close. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just need to get realistic with them. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. How your relationship with lenders has changed in the last couple of months in terms of from the listing point of view? Mm -hmm. and so, you know, because for me, it has been a more close relationship due to contingencies and price sales and all these kind of things. So, I have, you know, I have to go and talk to the listing agent about, you know, the borrower, the qualification and everything. I didn't have to do that before. Right. But now I have to get a more close. For buyers. So how for has been your experience on that? Hand in hand working with the mortgage person. I mean, on, on, on a daily basis, connecting with your mortgage person for both buyers, you know, and, and then reaching out on the sales side too, right? To make sure that you're picking the right offer when there are multiple offers. Um, absolutely, you have to lean on that that mortgage person. It, it, it has closer relationships than ever before right now with what can you do for this buyer? Can you do everything in eight days? Because I'm going to do an eight day due diligence and we're going to squeeze in the appraisal. We're going to squeeze in the financing and we're going to squeeze in everything in those eight days mm -hmm. so that you can compete with other offers. So absolutely figure out what your lender can do. I, I will tell you that the partnerships we have here, they are A plus plus Amen. a plus a plus Amen. and they yes. have really done an amazing job during this extreme yeah. seller's market for our buyers so yeah. um and they've gotten creative with us mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. definitely yeah and, and i was gonna say i i got a pre-approval letter and a new client and it wasn't from our partners in here and I just laughed out loud because I know they're not doing it, but there are lenders out there that are still saying in this market and your, your buyer's agent will help you get some closing costs. Mm -hmm. And I just laughed out loud and I said, honey, not in this market, right? Yeah. So please don't, do not tell <laughs> the, the client that we're going to help them get closing costs because it's just not happening. Here, and I know you lenders are not doing that. Here's the thing, too, I think with buyers is that, especially when they come with their own lender, we never mm -hmm. push. We never say you have to use our lender or mm -hmm. you really need to use our lender. You'll, you, you'll lose the, the, the buyer if you do that. However, you can say, great, you know what? Quick and fine. You can do that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to have a pre-approval letter from a local lender that I do a lot of business with because... I know that when it comes down to it, that listing agent's going to want to deal with somebody local, somebody they can pick up the phone and call mm -hmm. if there's an issue, and they're not going to be, they're not going to accept an offer when it's, they're going to be put on hold and not know what's going on with the deal. That's number one. Number, one. number two is, if I say to them, our local lender can do it in eight days, and that they can't, they typically will say, let me get approved, and they 90% of the time will end up with the lender that we've recommended mm -hmm. because they know after losing one or two houses, they're like, fine, we'll, we'll <laughs> use that. And they can match. They usually match whatever they have anyway. So definitely use your resources in the office. Other questions you all of Russell or Brenda? Well, guys, can we give them a hand for doing this? We're dismissed, guys. Have a great day. Thank you, Joe. Well, I put my hands on this. Thank you.